Good morning. Praise the Lord, St. Timothy. Praise the Lord, St. Timothy. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, what a privilege it is to come into the house of the Lord, to fellowship one to another. Looking around the sanctuary, you bring joy to my heart. The fact that you decided to come out to the house of the Lord to lift up his holy name, to praise him, to worship him in spirit and in truth. Oh, what a day it is. Oh, what a time we will have this day together in this place. Let us bow our heads. Oh, precious God on high. Father, we come to you with thanksgiving in our heart, dripping from our lips. For you are our God, and besides you there is no other. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come out this morning, Lord. As we look around, Father God, we came for one thing and we came for another thing, but what we came for, Lord, is you. We need you right now. Come in, holy God. Send your spirit right now to dwell among your people. Those here in the sanctuary, uh, those who are over uh, the social media, uh, Lord, bless us one by one and name by name. Oh, Lord, we thank you. And Lord, for those who are not feeling well in their body, the sick and the shed in, Father God. Stop by. Touch them. Renew them. Revive them. Let them know that thou art with them through all things. Lord, move right now. Have your way in this service. Have your way, oh God. Lord, we thank you. Lord, bless everything that's done in this service. Bless our pastors, Lord, as they continue to serve you, Father God. Lord, bless the choir as they sing unto you, Lord. For it's you that we honor today. It's you that we came today for, Father God. So, Lord, lift up our hearts and be ye lifted up. Lord, we thank you. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you've already done. Let your word go forth today, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now our choir. How many people are happy to be in the house of the Lord today? If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord today, stand up on your feet and sing with us this morning. We're going to give all praise and honor to his Savior, the Lord above. 
He is Alpha and Omega. He woke us up this morning, got stirs on our way. 2023 is going to be a good year. I claim that in Jesus' name. If 2022 wasn't good for you, 2023 is your year. I claim that right now. So sing with us this morning. We have a simple song we're going to sing. Give him praises all to him. Give him all the honor and glory. Lift up your hands with us today. Oh, we come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Everybody sing it. We come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come, we come. Oh, we come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Everybody sing it. We come, we come. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. That's why. Next verse is clap your hands. Come on. We come to clap our hands and give him glory. Clap your hands, everyone. We come to clap our hands and give him praise. Everybody sing it. Yeah.
want everybody to participate with us on this. How great is our God? Sing along with us. Everybody should know the tune on this. Just look on the screen for the words because we do serve a great God, a great God who is sovereign over all that we do and who can do anything he is able to do all. Want everyone to sing along with us. How great is our God? Go choir, how great.
start to really think about how great our God is. If you look back over your life and see how far God has brought you, that's how you ought to notice how great God is. Great is his faithfulness towards us. And if God has not been great to you, remain silent. But if he has been great to you, I said, but if God has been great to you, come on, don't fool me now. Heaven and earth adore him, angels bow down, but if God has been great, we ought to show some form of worship that that is true and evident in our lives, amen? Amen, I can see some blessed people in the room right now. Amen, God has been keeping over and over again. Amen, and as we have come to where in our, in our service where we can intercede on the behalf of others as we prepare our hearts and our minds for prayer. Let's be reminded to look down our row and pray for the person that's next to us. Because they may be sitting in smiles and joy, but really they could be hurting on the inside. A smile can hide a lot of things. But the word of God says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Anybody waiting on that joy? Anybody waiting on that unspeakable joy? And so allow us, as, we, as I pray, pray for the one that's sitting next to you. We live in a sin-sick world, but we serve a God who is able to save, who is able to deliver, who is able to heal, and who is able to set free. And he sent his son named Jesus to save us from everything. Allow us to pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you and we love you, O oh God. Before we ask of anything, we request that you forgive us of our sins, O oh God. And we ask that you throw them into the sea of forgiveness. Right now, God, we just come to say thank you. If we had 10,000 tongues, it still wouldn't be enough to tell you thank you because you've done so much in our lives. Your word, your word says you give us brand new mercies every day. And so God, we thank you for your covering and your protecting power. God, we understand it is not we ourselves who woke us up this morning, but it was nobody but you. And Lord, someone did not awake this morning. But you called our names and our eyes flew open, oh God. And that's enough to say thank you within itself. God, someone woke up not in their right mind this morning. God, someone woke up not knowing you, but oh God, we understand that you woke us up in our right minds in good health and good strength. For that we do say thank you. God, we understand that you are God and all and God all by yourself. We thank you for being omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Continue to touch, oh God. Touch our church family, oh God. Touch our sick and our shut-in. Stop by and see about them, oh God. 
God, let them know that you, that you are the head and not the tail. Let them know that they are above and not beneath. Let them know that you are a healer, that you're a way maker, God. You're a balm in Gilead. You're a bridge over troubled waters. Let them know that you're able to do everything but fail. And we believe by faith and not by sight, oh God. So God, we, act, we continue to ask for your covering over our church, oh God. We ask that you continue to bless our pastor. Bless him to write the vision that we may run with it. And we ask for a reciprocal blessing that as you bless him, you bless us. And as you bless us, you bless him. Oh God, your word says, how can man hear without the preacher? And so God, we thank you for him. God, we thank you for just keeping us day by day. God, it's not because we're so grand, oh God, but it's because you love us. So God, we continue to ask for your protection, your presence in our lives. And by your presence, God, we know that Satan cannot stand against us. And right now, God, we rebuke Satan in the name of Jesus. We rebuke Satan from our families. We rebuke Satan from our lives, oh God. And God, we believe in your word because your word says whatever we, you bind, we bind on earth, you bind in heaven. Whatever we rebuke on earth, you rebuke in heaven, oh God. And so God, we just ask for your presence with expectancy in our heart. Thank you for being a covering. Thank you for being a keeper. Thank you for rocking us to sleep at night. Letting us know that everything is going to be all right. God, we pray for your power. The power that can heal cancer. The power that can heal diabetes and high blood. God, we ask for your power. because none is great. So we thank you and we love you. We ask that you bless the worship experience on today. Continue to keep us in coverage, our prayer. In Jesus the Christ's name that we do pray, amen. If we may all stand at this time for our morning hymn. like to follow along, the words are on the screen to help. We've come this far by faith. We've come this far by faith.
giving all honor and praise to God and to his precious son, Jesus, to Reverend Dr. Jackson, Reverend Curran, Reverend Blue, members, friends, and the viewing and listening audience of St. Timothy Community Church, good morning. On this second Sunday after the day of Epiphany, when the three wise men saw Jesus, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That's taken from Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Join us on Wednesday at noon by dialing 312-626-6799. The meeting ID is 845-9303-5134. Please be mindful of the announcements in the printed bulletin, and I believe you have a survey in your bulletin as well. It says, please place the completed survey in the survey box at the check-in table at door three. And there are many announcements in the bulletin, so please be apprised of those as well. Let us remember our sick, our shut-in, our bereaved, and those in need of special prayer. And they include Tracy Connors Booker, Herbert Dunaway, Infant Anaya Jones, Rosie Washington, Sheila Lowry, Celeste Lewis, and Arbelia Carruthers. Please contact the church office to be added to the sick and shut in list and for pastor to know who is sick and shut in. May God bless you richly for giving to St. Timothy and our associated ministries. We encourage you to continue giving through our website by clicking the donate button, GiveLify, or you can download and use the Zelle app by using our church's email address, Timothy at hotmail.com. Also, you can utilize the U.S. mail or the church's mail slot. Contributions of any amount are always welcomed and very much appreciated. Join Pastor Jackson in Bible study every Wednesday at 6.45 p.m. and on Thursdays at 2 o'clock p.m. The dial-in number is 312-626-6799. The Zoom ID is 432-693-8337. On Sunday, January 15th, 2023, at 3.30 p.m., our pastor, Reverend Dr. Ramin M. Jackson, will be the guest speaker at Saints Home Church of God in Christ, 833 East 21st Avenue, Gary, Indiana, as they observe the 37th anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s national holiday. We are pleased to announce that our 2023 St. Timothy contribution envelopes have experienced a design change. These changes better address the church's needs and are outlined as follows. The term missionary fund has been changed to benevolent fund and parking lot repair has been added. Thank you in advance for your continued giving and patience as these newly designed envelopes will not be available until the latter part of January 2023. For your giving convenience, please feel free to contribute online, via U.S. mail, or pick up a pack of blank envelopes in the Ministry Center after service today. You can also pick up blank envelopes from the church office during the week. Please be sure to print your name and address on the envelope before you submit your offering. Lastly, envelopes were not ordered for members that give online. Again, thank you very much for your giving and patience. On Monday, January 16th, we will celebrate a day on, not a day off. As we remember the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, let us do something to help our community. You are invited to come out to St. Timothy on Monday, January 16th, from 9 a.m. to 12 noon along with the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, the Gamma Psi Omega Chapter, the Scouts of Pat Troop and Crew 53, 
to help sanitize the sanctuary, clean storage rooms, organize materials, and shred old documents. You can sign up after church today in the REL Ministry Center for a particular task if you'd like. Any questions, please see Kalana Mack. As always, thank you for your support in this endeavor. The Men's Fellowship is looking for a few good men. We have three officer positions open for nomination for a two-year term. They are secretary, co-chairman finance, and co-chairman activities. All men of the church are members of the Men's Fellowship. If any man is interested in serving or nominating an officer for this election, please contact Mark Hubbard, Mark, raise your hand, or Cleo Naylor, raise your hand, before Monday, January 23rd, 2023. The election for these officers will be held at our regular meeting on Saturday, February, 20, February 11th, 2023 at 10 a.m. All men of the church are urged to attend and participate in men's fellowship activities. Thank you in advance for your cooperation. And that's from Mark Hubbard, president. Won't God do it? Yes, he will and he has. St. Timothy Community Church family and supporters, you allowed us to provide $25 gift cards to Fresh County Market for 230 senior citizens and community residents who were able to purchase what they needed for their Christmas meal. We also provided household goods for our walk-ins on Saturday, December 27th, along with their gift cards. The smiles, the thank yous, and the silent prayers of praise inspire your food pantry ministry to continue to do all we can to help our community. A special thank you for the professional process that Fresh County Market provided by individualizing each $25 gift card and of course, to our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Ramin Jackson, for encouraging us to serve. We can't praise God enough for our church family. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that's from Herbert Dunaway, the food pantry coordinator. <clears throat> and this is a community announcement. The Gary Caregiver Support Group presented by the Alzheimer's Association, will meet the second Thursday of the month at 6 p.m. right here, <clears throat> excuse me, at St. Timothy Community Church. I did not receive any visitor's cards, but we are always happy and grateful to welcome any visitors to St. Timothy. If we have anyone visiting at this time, could you please stand and be recognized? Thank you. Could you please state your name and where you are from? Lincoln, we live in Munster. Peggy James, Little Rock, Arkansas. St. Peter's Rock Missionary Church. Welcome. Crystal Edwards, Cedar Hill, Texas. Potter's House, Dallas, Texas. Welcome. Can we please give our visitors a warm St. Timothy welcome? <laughs>
now our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Ramin Jackson. I greet you this morning with the love and joy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And we're so glad uh, that God has allowed us to fellowship with one another again on this Sunday morning. Uh, we thank God not only for a new year, but we thank God for another day that he has given unto us. Um, our youth are getting into position um, so they can uh, sing a few selections for us. For this is the second Sunday uh, where they um, gather and they worship uh, and they lead us uh, in worship through song. And so we're always um, glad to have our youth um, involved in our service. I just want to make a few additional announcements and we'll move forward in our worship experience uh, this morning. Um, it has been printed in your bulletin in regards to the Martin Luther King uh, celebration um, on uh, January 15th uh, at St. Home um, Church of God in Christ as I'm the keynote speaker, but that is being sponsored by uh, the Katie Hall Foundation. Uh, so I want to make mention of that, that it's sponsored by the Katie Hall uh, Foundation. And so we are looking forward to uh, being present and being supportive of uh, that event. Uh, and particularly the foundation uh, as we celebrate the life and legacy um, of uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, you'll be receiving in the mail the congr a congregational uh, New, Year, uh, New Year's letter uh, that will be coming from me, just giving some highlights of what has transpired uh, through our ministry in 2022. And then as we go into this new year, um, what we are looking to continue to do and some new things we're looking to do as it, um, as it relates to our church, but mainly as it relates to how we serve our community uh, and the vicinity. And so look forward to a letter uh, coming into the mail uh, that uh, kind of highlights some things we're going to be looking into and doing uh, in this new year. Uh, certainly we thank God for uh, each and every one of you for your participation uh, in service, but I do believe that that's what we're here for. The purpose of us being here is to serve not only just ourselves and our church, but to serve our community in any way possible. So thank you for all your resources and, um, and your energy and, um, and even your planning uh, as uh, we uh, look into the, uh, the certain things that we, uh, we're trying to do, objectives we're trying to do to fulfill our mission um, of our church. I'm asking every ministry to uh, make sure that you uh, submit your calendar uh, dates for the year. This is important so that we can plan uh, the rest of the year. So January, I look at it as a uh, planning month for the church. Uh, so this is the time where we look at our budget, the time we look at um, our calendar dates and what we're going to be doing throughout the year. So if you have some programs or events or things that you're looking to do, in your individual ministries, please list that and, uh, and submit it to the office so that we can uh, gather the dates and put it on the church calendar um, so we can move forward in the planning of 2023. Uh, we'll be meeting with all the presidents of all auxiliaries and ministries very soon as we kick off the new year, um, as we begin to plan and organize ourselves for 2023. What helps in that uh, process um, in your bulletin uh, it has been mentioned already, but there is a survey that I put together uh, that I would like for you all to uh, fill out. Um, and if you can do it today, wonderful. If not, if you need some more time to think about the questions, uh, you can certainly come back uh, with it next Sunday. And there are boxes on the table uh, that you can drop that uh, information in. And so I, I want to know. Um, the overall, how you rate um, our church's worship experience uh, and any comments that you may have in regards to that. Uh, what specific things do you like about our church? Uh, you can also list that in that area. Uh, third question is, um, if you had an opportunity to change something in our church, uh, what would that be uh, and why? And lastly, we know we have an annual concert. We will usually bring a celebrity uh, gospel artist um, to our church. Uh, we've had Donnie McKirkland one year, 2019, and we had COVID, and then last year we had uh, Pastor Kim Burrell uh, to come. And so I want to look 
had another um, artist to come to, um, to close out our revival in October. And so I'm looking for um, any suggestions that you may have uh, as a congregation. So if you would just fill that out for me, uh, again, if you don't do it today, if you can come back next week and just drop it in the box, that would help me and the staff to look at and prepare for, um, for this year. Uh, lastly, let me just make mention of there are so many on our sick and shut-in list, uh, and if there are those that I may not know about, please let the church office know so that we can respond to our members that are sick and shut-in. Uh, I will be doing a hospital visit. Many of you know I'm, I'm a chaplain already in, in the Methodist hospitals, uh, but I will be stopping by the hospital today um, as Roy Heitch is in the hospital. Um, I know that um, uh, Mr. Dunaway uh, was also in the hospital, uh, but I believe that um, they were looking at um, bring, transferring him into a facility. Uh, but we want to keep all those uh, that are experiencing illness and sickness, particularly those in hospitals, that we pray for them and, and those, so they know they're never alone, that they have a church and a pastor that's praying on their behalf. If you can just, uh, before Pastor Curran comes with his uh, announcement for the, the youth, um, and then our youth is going to uh, sing for us. Uh, but if you can just look at someone and just wave uh, and just greet uh, this Koinonia Fellowship um, and uh, say, God loves you and so do I. Just let them see your, your, your smiley face. I know you have masks on, some of you. Just bat your eyes. Don't be fresh, but bat your eyes. And, uh, and just let someone feel the love of Christ uh, this morning. And we certainly greet those on our, um, our, on our conference call line and those that are viewing our broadcast. Uh, we have many people viewing from many parts of the uh, United States and folks that are outside the country um, that are viewing. I remember a pastor said to me he was in Africa, and while he was in Africa, uh, he was viewing our service and, uh, and had those around him viewing our service. So you never know who's watching, but we welcome you, those who are uh, attending our worship and service over the airways. We welcome you this morning. Those that are on our social media pages, we encourage you to hit uh, select the, um, the share button and share uh, your social media page with others of your friends uh, and invite them into the service as well as we worship the Lord together in spirit and in truth. Uh, Pastor Kern's going to come and just uh, make his announcement with the, uh, in regards to our youth ministry, and then followed by him. After him, we'll have our youth ministry, uh, children's choir, youth choir, to give us a selection. Hey Amen. We do greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior. Uh, Jesus Christ. Um, just a, a couple of announcements uh, for the youth, and I'll be out of your way very quickly. Um, this month or this year, we're taking a um, even further in-depth approach with our youth and spirituality, and so every month we're going to teach them about a principle of the Bible. Um, last year we worked on uh, Bible stories and uh, Bible knowledge, and this year we want to tap into our spirituality with our youth. So this month we'll uh, be talking about prayer, and also um, for after church, immediately after church in meeting room A, there will be um, a youth teacher and volunteer meeting, and also this is an extension or an invitation for those that would like to be uh, a part of the youth ministry as far as being a teacher or volunteer of youth church. Um, again, it will be following service in meeting room A. God bless and God keep.
I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared. Because you cared for me. In such a special way. In such a special way. That's why I praise you. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. I lift you up. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Let's do that again. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care. Because you care for me. In such a special way. That's why I praise you. I praise you. I lift you up. I lift you up. And I magnify your name. That's why my heart. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind. My heart. My mind. My mind. My soul. My soul belongs to you. You paid the debt. You paid the debt for me. Way back on Calvary. Way back on Calvary. That, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why. That again. My heart. My heart. My mind. My mind. My soul. My soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me. You paid the price for me. Way back on Calvary. Way back on Calvary. That's why I praise That's you. That's why I praise you. I live Heart. My heart is filled with prayer. Back to the beginning. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared. Because you cared for me. It's such a special way. That's why I praise you. Church, we know this song. Feel free to join in with the teens this morning. I give myself away. Here we go. I give. I give myself away. Yes, I give. I give myself away. So you. So you can use. I give.
I give. Take my heart. Take my take my life. Take as a living sacrifice. Living sacrifice. All my dreams. All my plans. All my plans. Lord, I place them. Lord, I in your hands. Life is not my own. My life is not my own. You are the Lord. I give myself. I give myself to you. My life. My life. Give myself away. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Yes. I give myself away. As we celebrate our youth, we thank God for them. As we look into our offertory statement and prayer, as those that have gathered this morning, you have had opportunity to give as you come into the sanctuary. And we encourage those that are viewing online and on our broadcast 
that you can go to the online giving portal and hit the donate button and you can certainly give to the ministry that will be a blessing as we continue to serve and as we continue to not only aid our church but also help the community at large. Let me offer a passage of scripture that would help us in our giving. Second Corinthians, the Apostle Paul writes this, chapter 8, verse 10. It says, and here is my judgment after what is best for you in this matter. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now finally, the work so that your eager or willingness to do, to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Paul encourages us through his writing to the church of Corinth and the believers of Corinth, he encourages them to continue to give, to give as the Lord has given unto them. And as the Apostle Paul encourages the church, I encourage you, as God has blessed you, even in last year, as he blesses you in this year, that we give out of the means of which God has given unto us. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for taking care of us in 2022. And God, now as we are now in the eighth day of the first month of the year, God, we know that you will take care of us in this year. God, we thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, O oh Lord. And we take those blessings, O oh God, and we do not, we're not selfish, but God, we give back unto you. We give back unto you through the ministry of the church as we bless our church and as we bless the objectives and the mission of the church as we help those that are in need and as we aid our community. God, we thank you for the giver and we thank you for putting it on our hearts to give. Now bless us in Jesus' name we pray as we bless you. Amen. Our choir is going to come and render us a, a sermonic selection and then I'll be back before you with the word from the Lord.
I love to praise the Lord. scripture lesson, which is our Bible study lesson for the week. And those that are visiting, we study the scriptural lesson during the week, and then we share in the word of God on Sunday morning as we've studied. First John chapter 1, and I'm going to be really dealing with verses 5 through 10 as we look into and glean into the word of God this morning. As you are searching uh, for the scriptural lesson of 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, let me share uh, this story. Uh, it's a joke that's told, entitled rather, I Saw Nothing. Man was from England and one from France and one from Canada. They got acquainted and started talking about their wives. Uh, the guy from England began to say, or he told his wife rather, um, he told his wife, he said, I, in no uncertain terms, uh, that from now on she would have to do her own cooking. Well, the first day after he told her that, he saw nothing. The second day, he saw nothing. But the third day, he said he came down, came home from work, rather, and the table was spread with a wonderful dinner prepared and dessert. And then the man from France spoke up, and he said, I sat my wife down and told her that from now on, she would have to do her own shopping and also do, do the cleaning. Uh, the first day, he saw nothing. The second day, he saw nothing. But on the third day, when I came home, the whole house was spotless, and the pantry, the shelves were filled with groceries. Then the last fellow from Canada was married to an enlightened woman. And he sat up straight and he pushed out his chest and said to her, I gave my wife a stern look and told her that from now on she would have to do all the cooking, shopping, and house cleaning. Well, the first day he saw nothing. The second day he saw nothing. But on the third day, he said, I could see a little bit out of my left eye. Married couples understand. <laughs> First John chapter 1, uh, verse 5 through verse 10. If you read with me, I'm reading from the NIV, and it says this. 
This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we, cl- if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Last verse, verse 10. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. I want to draw our attention through those few verses and talk about Pay attention to the light. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this moment in which we share together in your word. Bless us. Speak to us. Give us revelation of the biblical writ. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why is it that bad news seems to travel quicker than good news? The evil things that happen in society travel much quicker than good things that happen in our world and even in our community. It seems as if that more attention is given to darkness or the things that represent darkness rather than the things that represent light. Think about just last year and some uh, there's some things that have been going on from year to year actually but we think about in our society as there have been a lot of controversies and discussions and we've seen on the news even about immigration I was reading an article by Anderson Cooper uh, who is a show uh, a uh, a host that um, that is on uh, the the 60 minutes and he reports about busloads of immigrants uh, being bussed, ten thousands of men uh, and women uh, and children from the border of New Mexico, and how they were bussed to New York and bussed to Chicago and Washington, D.C. And he states in his 60 minute article that uh, it was organized by two of the governors, one of Texas and the other of Arizona, using tax dollars to, uh, to migrate uh, these immigrants from um, their, out of their state into other states, that these immigrants that had become their problem, they pushed them on to another state to make it their problem. I'll talk about how humane that looks, inhumane that looks. We look at the educational systems. We look at how it's being harmed, uh, not uh, having uh, a just uh, uh, quality of education being given to all students. But not just the funding of education, but also we look at how the increasing of school shootings that have happened over our country. We look at politics, we look at Uh, These days where anyone can become, it seems as if, an elected official. Uh, They don't, some of them don't uh, share the experiences of what uh, residents and citizens actually struggle through. We have those that, uh, that have difficulty or have no clue about the issues that plague our society or even plague our communities. Uh, We saw this in the United States Senate race for uh, the state of Georgia. And many of you still today still scratching your head trying to figure out why that race was so close between Herschel Walker and Raphael Warnock. 
We look at not even just that, but we look at even our own city, the city of Gary, in which many of you live, our church resides, uh, many of you have grown up. But the issues that plague our city from poverty, from the unemployment, the mental illness, we look at the overpopulated shelters uh, due to homelessness, we look at the shootings and killings, and, and I bear witness of that because being a chaplain, I get paged when there's a shooting that happens. And then they call for a chaplain to come and have to help a mother uh, that has uh, lost her son who was 18 or 20 something years old. We look at uh, the challenges that we face in the educational system in our city, not just in the public school, but also in the charter school. I know uh, there's always been debates and, 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 and ill feelings between the public school and the charter school, but I always have said that it's still our children no matter what schools that they're in. And even though darkness continues to plague our society and communities, God still is the light. God gives us light. God uses uh, himself to be the light through us as the vehicles, as the vessels of his. So as we look at and as we witness darkness all around us, we also have to look at and pay attention to the light. And we can talk about and we can um, have meetings after meetings and we can have uh, conversations over the telephone about all that is going wrong in society and in our communities. But I would challenge us in this new year of 2023 to not just look at the darkness and dwell in darkness, but when are we going to look at and focus on the light? What I submit, submit to us this morning is that uh, we become the examples or we become uh, the, uh, the vehicles that God uses to demonstrate the light. Our church, praise God, has been in, in existence for 96 years and this year we'll be celebrating 97 years. But over the years, this church has been a beacon of light in this community. Over the years, there have been many uh, members who have given up their sweat and tears and given up their resources to uh, be a blessing to this ministry that has been a blessing to this city and surrounding. I would submit to us that uh, we have been the beacon of light in a world and a community that's faced with darkness. Our church, along with other churches and organizations, have been the light. We have been the light in 2022 through our tutoring program where we have tutored over 25 kids and helping them to, uh, to uh, gain skill sets that would help them in their learning. We have been the light, St. Timothy, through our food pantry feeding over 100 to 150 uh, folks who were in need of food. We have been the light through the food giveaways when we partnered uh, with Northwest Indiana Food Bank and we have fed over 400 people uh, every other month. We have been the light. We talk about the toy giveaway when we have blessed over 200 youth in the community with toys that they can sit around the Christmas tree and have something to be able to open up on Christmas morning. We have been the light when it came to the angel tree and over a hundred kids have received gifts through this church because God has blessed you to have a heart to give to someone that was less fortunate. We've been the light through Thanksgiving where uh, we have purchased our own turkeys and hams and macaroni and cheese and collard greens but yet there was someone Oh, that didn't have to, to put on their table, but through Thanksgiving, we partnered with the Deltas and fed 500 meals to folks who were in need. We have been the light through the missionary fund and who, what is now called the Benevolence Fund that you, the people of God, have given over $15,000 to the missionary fund. And through that fund, we have blessed those who have lost or were or in, in jeopardy of losing, uh, of being evicted from their house or evicted from their apartment. And through those funds, we're able to keep folks uh, with a roof over their head when we partnered with Calumet Township trustees. We have been 
been the light. We have been the light. We are dealing with those. I remember the 86-year-old woman that, uh, that called our ministry because uh, her electricity went out and she needed electricity in order to uh, help her with her health condition. And we were able to help put her lights back on. I'm telling you, we have been a beacon of light. We have given a family of four while they were looking for permanent res residency. We have been the beacon of light keeping them in a hotel so that they can have a smooth transition and not be out on the street until they got permanent residence. We have been the light. We have been the light uh, when we have helped several organizations to help the community at large, our funds and our service together, we have been the light. And even in a dark world, God is calling the church, God is calling the believer to be the light. And so here, my brothers and sisters, we find ourselves parked in 1 John, where John writes this book. And John writes this book along with Revelations, where he writes this book of 1 John while he was in Ephesus. But then he writes Revelation, the second book, where he is coming from the island of Patmos. Uh, he begins to uh, have solitude and begins to see visions, and God shows him things, and he begins to experience firsthand the Apostle John of Christ Jesus uh, and speaking to him as he aids those that are in need. We find the Apostle John, not only is he writing these books, but he writes 1 John in a time where there were Gnostics. There were those that uh, believe in collecting ideas and, uh, and, and religious systems. And they believe that God, the Holy One of God, could never be placed in human flesh. But John writes this text and he begins to let the Gnostics know that uh, there is a holy God and that holy God can do anything. That holy God can use anyone. And I submit to us this morning that a holy God can rest in human flesh. Uh, we find that in the narrative of the birth of Christ, where God realized that humanity was messed up, there was chaotic chaos in the world, and therefore God needed to uh, send himself down in human flesh to be able to save the world. So he puts himself in a uh, human flesh called Mary. The Virgin Mary begins to hold uh, this, this anointed one in her womb, and after holding him for nine months, she delivered him into this world. Jesus came into a world of sin, a world of darkness, a world that was chaotic, but when he came into the world, he brought light to the world. How does he bring light to the world? Because he comes from his father. God, the Bible says, is light. And because God is light, he sends Jesus the Christ into the womb of a woman that now comes into this world and he gives light. What's so special about light? Because light is the only thing that can shine in darkness. I will submit to us this morning, we must draw our attention, pay attention to the light. It's right here in our text this morning. Three things I give us in the text. Number one, we pay attention to the light by knowing that God is the light. John, the Apostle John, shares that in verse 5 with us. He says, this is the message. Verse 5, this is the message, he says. We have heard from him. And declare to you that God is light. The Apostle Paul says, you may not have heard for yourself, but I am bearing witness as an apostle of what I've heard from myself. That God has spoken unto me and has told me that he is the light. We need him to shine in the midst of darkness. In other words, that he is the answer to our questions. He is the answer to what it is that we struggle with from day to day. God is the light. 
And so we, uh, the Apostle John, Apostle John tells us that we have to have knowledge of or know that he is the light. If you don't know it, you got to believe what John is saying in the word of God. John tells his, the, those that are around him, those followers that are around him, John says to them that you may focus on the darkness, but I'm going to focus on what I know. And what I know to be true is that God is the deliberator. God is the sustainer. God is the protector. What I know is that when I'm, my back is against the wall, there's a God that can turn things around. What I know is that when I'm at rock bottom, there's a God that will meet me where I am. What I know John the Apostle is saying to the people of God is that uh, you may not believe that God can resonate in us, but reside in us, but what I know is I feel God. I feel God. And I know there's somebody here this morning that can testify like the Apostle John is that I may not see God, but I can feel God. I, I, I may not be able uh, to, to point out uh, and, 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 and demonstrate or draw what God looks like, but when I see miracles happen, that's God. When I, when I see uh, lives change, that's God. When I see someone who's turned their life around and drawn closer to him, I know that's God. When I realized when I didn't have two nickels to put together to make a dime, but God blessed me with a house, a home, where God blessed me with a car, a job, I know that that is God. And I believe that there are several of us here this morning. That's your testimony like the Apostle John. I know God for myself. You don't have to tell me about God. I know God for myself. You don't have to demonstrate to me who God is. I know God for myself. Uh, uh, the same God that took care of mama is the same God that's taking care of me. The same God that took care of my grandmother is the same God that's taking care of me. I know God in the consciousness of my mind. I know I could not have made it thus far without God who was on my side. In the consciousness of my mind, I begin to reflect over the years that God has pulled me together, how God has clothed me in my right mind, how God God has taken care of me when it looked like I couldn't take care of myself. I know that there was a God that was in the midst of the planning business. As I was planning my life, God had already planned my life before I planned my life. That I know about God, that whatever mess ups I had, God knew the mess up. No matter what the blessings I had, God knew the blessing before I knew. It's the knowing uh, pay attention to the light uh, that he, uh, that know he is the light. Uh, but then here it is. Secondly, I say to us, pay attention to the light by focusing on the light, the light of God and not on darkness. Same there. Verse five is right there. It says in him, there is no darkness at all. He, here's, here's the word in him therefore one may question well how can we have all this darkness around us why is it so much evilness and chaos chaos all around us uh, it's not in him it's in the world that he created therefore he gave choice in the world that he created and because god gave choice in the world that he created Man, the fall of man, had a choice to do good or evil. Y'all know the story of the two trees in, uh, in the book of Genesis, in the Garden of Eden, the tree of life, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And once humanity got uh, knowledge of, then we have uh, the... Uh, the choice to choose if we're going to do good or if we're going to do evil. Uh, but, but as the world has given this darkness, God says, but I'm not of the darkness. I'm of the light. Therefore, we have to focus our attention. Stop focusing your stuff on the wrong and the evil that's going on in the world. But focus our attention on the one that can be the, the, the resource in fixing what's wrong in our world. 
It's not that we don't ignore the issues, the injustice. We don't ignore uh, the evilness that's going on, the violence that goes on. But what we do is we say that even in a world that's full of all of this darkness, we have a God that's within this world, that's within us, that can give light. And therefore, we must focus on the light and not the darkness. Uh, lastly, I want to leave with us, pay attention to the acceptance of the light. It's in verse 6 and 7. Where it says, if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and, and do not live out the truth. Fellowship, koinonia. We've learned that word this week in Bible study, the Greek word, koinonia. Literally means to have this relationship with one another. But the relationship that we have with one another is based upon what similar interests that we have. We are able to come together as the body of Christ to have koinonia because we have, we have a similar interest which is serving God and embracing Christ. That's what brings the people of God, Christians, together. We believe that God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins as a sacrificial lamb and then he rose again for all humanity, that we may be saved, and he lives. That's what koinonia does for us. We come together as the body of believers believing what the word of God says. Therefore, you know, I, I can fellowship with other denominations. I can fellowship with other people. We may not always agree with our doctrine. You know, there's some churches that don't believe that women ought to preach. Uh, there's some churches that believe that, uh, denominations that believe that uh, women ought not to wear makeup. Uh, or, or, or to wear, or wear pants in the church. You know, that's doctrinal stuff. Uh, policies. Right? Uh, but but what, what the Apostle John is saying to us is that we ought to find some other interests that bring us and bridge us together. Uh, who cares if you wear pants or a skirt? Uh, just make sure that skirt is not hushed up. <laughs> now don't start checking your skirts now. <laughs> but the point that we're making is that come into the house of God and we worship God because God is the true and almighty. Pay attention to the light. Accept him as we have koinonia, as we have fellowship with one another. Verse 7, uh, and if we walk in the light, Apostle John says, as he is in the light. That's, that, that's the important thing there. We walk in the light because he, God, is in the light. He is the light. And so as we walk in light, we walk with God. How do I know I'm walking with God? Well, you know you're walking with God where you know that uh, he is able to show his presence and you feel his presence while you're walking in darkness. In other words, the darkness doesn't affect you, doesn't affect your spirit. Sometimes you could be in darkness so long where it'll tamper or, or work on your own spirit. And then you feel like you're low and you feel like you're down and you feel like you're out because you hang around so much darkness. But if we ever can just embrace the power of God through the light of God, that no matter what darkness we face or we're in, that the light of God will show light in the midst of our darkness. We ought to accept, here it is, the light. Here it says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, he, here it is, we have fellowship with, here it is, one another. We have koinonia with one another because we all are in what? The light. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from, here it is, all sin. So therefore, as we walk in the light of God, that while we walk in the light of God, that God purifies us. 
His blood, the blood of Jesus, covers us. Why? Because we're walking in the light. And it frees us, liberates us from all sin. Well, someone may say, well, Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't sin. Now, the Bible says, if you think all sin and fall short of the glory of God, and if you think you, ain't, you don't do any wrong, the Bible says you're deceiving yourself. Right. Now, I would say, most pastors would say, turn to your neighbor and say, stop lying to yourself. But talk to yourself. We have to be honest with ourselves to know when we do right and when we do wrong. Ask God to help us to get ourselves, what, together. And it's easy to look at someone who does wrong and point the finger. But the question is, when you point one finger, look at how many fingers are pointing right back at yourself. Yeah. Pay attention to the light. I'll close with this. Um, as a kid, I must have been, I guess, 10, 12 years old, and we would travel and go to um, uh, Indian, uh, Indian River Park, I remember as a kid. And uh, I shared this story briefly in Bible study this week. And it was about 20 of us kids, and we had a group leader and some chaperones, and we would go to Indian Park, and uh, it was a camping park where you would um, camp out. Um, and and uh, I, I must admit, where's Kalana at? I, I don't, uh, she's been trying to get me a part of the, uh, the scouts for uh, quite some time um, to, to go out camping. And I said to her, I'll show up, I'll dine with y'all in the woods, but I'm gonna find the nearest hotel. Because I've had the experience of already of camping out in the woods. Uh, but, at, but this group of us, as we were kids, and uh, they would take us at night. We would, we would hike in the, in the dark in the woods. And, we would, and, and our instructor would say to us, uh, or the leader would say to us, uh, we must stay in a group. And not only would we stay in the group, the group leader had a big flashlight. And we would follow the group leader who had the flashlight that would lead us through the paths as we were going through uh, the forest, the woods. Well, you know, a few of us kids, uh, you know, when you tell us not to do something, we're going to do it. It's almost like someone says, don't touch the hot stove. And what do you do? You touch the hot stove. Uh, and so a few of us, I think it was like three or four of us, we decided that we was going to depart from the group and we we're going to go our own way. And, uh, and, get, and we got lost in the woods. And what was uh, scary to me, and that's why I don't go camping anymore, we started hearing noises. And, and, and those noises began to frighten us. And I began to look around and say, okay, we got to get out of here. But we couldn't find the group because we had moved away from the group. But then... One of my friends in the group said, just look at, let's find the light. And even while we could not hear the group, and we could not see the group, but we saw the group leader and we saw that big old flashlight. And so we were able to pinpoint where our group leader was. And we quickly, quickly, very quickly, <laughs> ran and got onto the path and found our group and the group leader that had the flashlight. What I'm submitting to us this morning is that it's important for us to pay attention to the light. Why? Because when we fall in darkness, when we, like us as kids, move away from the group, move away from Bible study, move away from prayer meetings, move away from church, and move away from uh, the group of people that are uh, of faith. We begin to move away from, um, from, from God because we're focused on uh, the issues of life and, 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 how, uh, and how bad life is and it, and, it, and it captures us. When we move away from that, at some point one has to say, I've got to turn myself around and find the light. And when we find the light, 
The light will put us back on track. The light will put us back on our path. The light will certainly brighten our day, brighten our life, brighten our world. And we have to realize that we cannot make it without the light. And so uh, Sister Starling uh, bought uh, about 200 uh, uh, lights. And, you know, last Sunday we used the light. And this is the image of the revelation that God showed me. And I'm going to share with you this morning. When we, as the people of God, turn on our lights, there are people who are in darkness that need to see the light. They need to see hope. And when they can't find it in God, God is supposed to be in us, where people ought to see the light. And so I submit to us this morning is that I want to encourage us to be bolder this year. Stop hiding the light. Stop hiding the light as if you're embarrassed about who you serve. Stop hiding the light as if you are not encouraged about the God that raises you and the God that has been taking care of you. And it, it, it may sound silly to other people when you, they ask you, how are you making it over? How are you making it through? It's because of the light of God. So I, I would submit to us this new year, show your light. Yeah. And here's the thing about when we show the light of God in us that's coming through us, is that no matter where you go, there's the light. So if you're walking over to the grocery store and you're in aisle six trying to get peanut butter and jelly, you ought to, somebody ought to see the light. Yeah. When, when, ladies, when you're going into the beauty salon and you're trying to get your hair did, done, get those curls tight for Sunday morning, make sure you're showing the light uh, because you never know who you're going to come in contact with that may have a, a, a bad day or uh, they have given up on God and uh, circumstances have gotten rough for them so they said I I'm not going to church anymore because somebody hurt me in the church or I'm not going to be able to uh, 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 survive because I can't do it by myself somebody ought to be able to after your hair get dried up they say uh, God is still God and God can pick you up God can turn you around God can make a way for you how do I know this because God had done it for me when my light was out, when my light was off, when I could not see my way, somebody encouraged me to turn my light back on. I just come to help somebody this morning as we close this sermon, as we close this worship experience. If your light is out this morning, you ought to ask God, turn the light on. If your light is out, you ought to ask God this morning to give you the encouragement to be able to be bold enough to know that you need God in your life. If your light is out this morning because you've been discouraged about life, been discouraged about circumstances, been discouraged about your health issues, you got to know this morning before you leave this sanctuary, turn on your light to say, I believe God in the midst of, I believe God can make a way, I believe God can raise me up, I believe God can pay my bills, I believe God can heal my body, I believe God can open up opportunities. I believe God can raise me. I believe God can be able to provide for me. Is there anybody here this morning that came this morning that said, Pastor, sometimes I feel my light is going out, but I come to tell you I pray and declare and decree this morning that God will enlighten you this morning enough to say my light is going to shine no matter what darkness I'm faced with, no matter what darkness I'm in, no matter what darkness is around me, I I'm going to turn on my light. Nipsco can't turn this light out. I'm going to hold on to God, the God's unchanging hand, and that when I do that, God will keep me forever in his care. Pay attention to the light. And when you pay attention to the light, the light will keep you and help you to keep somebody else. Let us stand all over the sanctuary. The word this morning, pay attention to the light. Pay attention to the light that's not only within you, but the light that's in your neighbor. 
the light that's shining in your friends and folks on the job and pay attention to the light and let it shine well you don't have to have a big old light but the song says this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine and when all our lights begin to shine we make a difference in this world I'm gonna let it shine this little light I'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine let it shine As we begin to open the doors of the church, extend an opportunity for someone that may have come this morning or someone that may be viewing on our broadcast. First call is that I'm not saved and I want to accept the light of Christ into my life. We open up the doors of the church. What does that mean? An opportunity for someone to say I've never ex 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 God to forgive me. I never expressed the fact that I would love to be a part of a church and to experience salvation of Christ being in my life. And so what do I do, Pastor? Well, if you haven't made that declaration, the Apostle Paul says to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is Lord and you shall be saved. Salvation is not complicated. We make it complicated. Salvation is simple. It's a matter of confession. So if you're on viewing our, our broadcast or if you're in person, you say, I've never accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. I've never made that declaration and confession would you come my brother would you come my sister would you follow the light would you focus your attention on the light and would you come second call is I'm already saved I don't have a church home but I want this church to be my home would you come oh and I'm gonna let it is another that said I'm already saved but I don't have a church home and I want this church to be my church home where I come and worship where I come and study the Word of God where I fellowship with the saints, where I serve my community through my church. We are a community church. We believe in fellowship and love with one another and fellowship and love with our community. We invite you to come. This little light of mine, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Would you come, my brother? Would you come, my sister? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it This is the light of mine. This is the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Amen. If there's no other. I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it this little light of mine, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Given all honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to our pastor, Reverend Jackson, church members, church family, friends, visitors. We have coming this morning to us, uh, Sandra Comer. She's coming by Christian experience and her birth month February. God bless you. Now, her birth mother is what now? February. February. Oh, that's next month. All right. All those, um, those that are visiting with us, we are broken up. Our church is broken up into birthday groups, and that's how we fellowship with one another through our birthday groups. Uh, and so those that are in February, just wave your hand so you can see her, and she can see you. All right. February birthday group. So the president of the February birthday group will reach out to you. Um, and um, Sister Holcomb, um, just wave your hand, Sister Holcomb. She's our uh, person that does uh, em embraces all of our new members, and she'll be meeting with you, um, and uh, we'll be welcoming you into this fold and this worship uh, environment. And the family 
uh, of God. Uh, you know, stranger to us, you've been always coming and serving and, and singing in the choir and doing everything. So we're glad um, that you uh, made the decision to join us. And, uh, and I'm certainly glad to be your pastor. Um, and so we're glad to have you. Uh, so we'll um, get your information, the rest of your information after service, and we'll be in contact with you. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Amen. Minister Blue is going to, uh, you know, he's one of our newer members of our church, and we've added him to the ministry of our, um, of our ministerial staff. Uh, we also have, if, if she's still here, um, Sister Carmen uh, McKee. Is she still here? Do I see her? Okay, she probably had to run. Uh, but she's one of the um, chaplains that was in Methodist Hospital serving along with me. And she has joined our church under watch care, uh, but she's also ordained clergy as well. So we'll be slowly bringing her uh, onto the ministerial staff as well uh, to help us. And, um, and so we thank God. So therefore, God is adding to the church. All right. Amen. 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 Um, and, um, and as scripture says, the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. But we thank God for the few laborers that God has blessed this church with that has been a blessing uh, not only to our church, but also to uh, our community. So we thank you. We thank you for all the visitors that are visiting with us, those that are tuning in online, and we pray that something was said and done that would encourage you. And certainly we welcome you to, to attend uh, worship again with us on uh, next week. Uh, Minister Blue is going to close us out with a benediction. Let us bow our heads. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power now and ever. Amen. 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 Follow, follow the directions of the ushers, please.
www.saintimothychurch.org. Share this with your family and friends. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Have a blessed week.